I suppose that, that starts to come down to to developers having interpersonal soft skills, which is not always the case. You know, the no. the, the developers that have been sort of locked in a darkened room um, to just get on with it in silos for for years, which was the way of working back in certainly eighties and nineties, and probably right through to some of the the two thousands. Well, I think even now, I think that's the case of just um, locked for, locked for nerds in the room and just leave them to it, right? Which which is fine, but I think yeah, we do we do do people a bit of a disservice when we we apply this kind of um, trope of being you know yeah. autistic developers or, or whatever, right? I, I don't I, I don't think that's the case in a lot of cases. I think that it's it's an environment that you build around, and if you it's like you know you keep people in the dark and feed them shit, they're going to become mushrooms, right? Like. Mm. It, um, it, it's uh, if we if we perpetuate that that idea and that culture that that you know people don't have social skills and we can't possibly understand how to to talk to each other, I think it it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. But if we build a culture and build a team where people can give feedback constructively and, and ask questions well and all that kind of stuff, then then it is really you know it it does work. Um, it is hard though, right? So I know it's you know just people's ability to ask constructive, well thought out questions. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? What do you mean, an African or European swallow? Huh? I I don't know that. Yeah, yeah why well, in my current role, what I get I provide a lot of people with help on things that they are uh, struggling with, and you know my thing is always you know my doors open, you can come and ask me a question whenever you want book time with me and, and we'll, we'll do it but you do get questions where people don't bother to formulate the question it's like you know this this doesn't work full stop and that's it that's all you get right you can't log in type of thing and um you know it, it's encouraging those people you know show me the code send me the link to where it's broken give me an example of the error what does the log say and you know formulate the question with all the information in the context so i can be in the problem with you rather than um you know me having to ask 25 follow-up questions about what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do. And then um, and then sometimes you get the flip side to that where somebody books some time with you or they give you a call and you sit there, you say all of two words and they've pretty much just talked themselves around the solution. It's just the fact that they've got a sounding board that's making you know visual feedbacks as they're talking is, is yeah. enough to get them on the right path and they've solved their own problem. Yeah, rubber, rubber duck programming, right? Yeah. You've you heard that term before? No, I haven't actually, no. No, it's a, it's a term rubber duck program. The idea that if you explain something to a rubber duck, you can come up with a solution <laughs> yourself in the act of just kind of yes. expressing yeah. it yeah. can help you solve the problem, right? Um, so it's a, Yeah, well, I've, I've got the, the, the little guy that sits on the shelf is my, my equivalent of rubber duck. That's, yeah, so that's the, the, the idea that you can have something on your desk to explain the problem and by expl the, the act of explaining the problem and thinking it out gives you a solution, right? And, and yeah, sometimes you don't need to say much. Uh, to, to help people think about the problem um but you know i like that i like um people coming with problems and helping poke them and with, with some constructive questions about how they're thinking about the problem <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's, it's about you know letting them solve their own problem because they're going to learn from that you know they're going to be able to do it approach it in a different way next time um okay. whereas if you just give them a solution that's not helpful so i mean it's, it's almost back to the original you know you, you can you give a man a fish, you can eat for a day. You teach him how to fish, you can eat for a lifetime. So it's more about that—that that teaching the skills, um, that you know, sensible question asking, the introspection that you need to do to to solve yeah, your own yeah. problem, rather than just saying here's a solution. I mean, there are yeah. some times when all you can do is give it is that there's a solution because the solution already exists and it's just over here. It's just more pointing them in the direction of where to yeah, go, yeah. trying to reinvent the wheel, but. And you do often have those conversations where no matter how hard you can't can't convince somebody um to do to change their opinion and do something in a way that you know to be better better's relative right. His way, my way. I was six seconds faster. What if I see that it's not like a, a pressing problem? I will let I try and let them come to their own conclusions about how how they should do it by you know giving them the advice and saying what well, you can do it your way and then then see where we get to. Sometimes you've just got to, it's like uh, you got to let people make the mistakes. It's good, good to know that people have the same problems as I do.
I like to call them a trapdoor, a trapdoor decision, right? So if you see people making a decision where they fall through the door and it's hard to get back out again or impossible, that's when you stop in and then they'll do it like this. But if it's an easy in and out door where yeah, they can yeah. make a decision and they can reverse reverse back and, and undo the decision, then I'm less bothered. But like the occasional trapdoor decision where undoing this decision we're going to make is difficult and expensive. So do we really want to do it this way or that way or, or the other way? But yeah, that's what some of those decisions depend on code base as well. I mean, if you've, oh, got, it's all if, if, right? if you've got a, a code base, it's really easy to change. You know, making those decisions and allowing them to experiment yeah, is, is really, really an easy choice. But if you've got something that's so intertwined and wrapped up that, you know, making that choice could well, you know, put, you know, progress back, you know, six months, then you really got to think about whether you let them lose something or not. Yeah, I mean, like everything in software, like, Probably my use for most use phrase is well, it depends, right? Like <laughs> no hard and fast rules. And back to something we said before, um, you know, there's no laws of physics of software engineering. Yeah, a lot of it just depends, right? Um, so I mean, I mean, I mean you know, it's like trying to build a house in Minecraft. You know, the, the the fact that you can undermine loads of blocks and they just float. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's software development. 